Hey, it's Scott Kubo. Uh, let's take a look at how Autopod detects uh, vehicles that are about to cut into your lane. If you look at the Autopod display, you can see that the lead vehicle is a darker shade of gray and Autopod is tracking its speed and distance. Now this white car on the right is cutting in and you can see that in the display, it now turns a darker shade of gray, showing that Autopilot is tracking it and adjusting speed and distance accordingly. And this horizontal line on the display shows whether Autopilot is trying to increase speed or use regenerative braking. Now this car is going to cut us off and Autopilot has to decelerate relatively abruptly. If we rewind a little bit, we can see that when Autopilot starts detecting that vehicle and trying to slow down for it, uh, at this point, the car's tires are well across the lane line and into our lane. And it'd be nice if Autopilot could detect that a little earlier. So this was version 2018.48, so around December of 18. And, and this is the way it was since the beginning. And you can see at high speeds, it's even more of a problem when somebody cuts you off and they're going slow, Autopilot really has to decelerate abruptly and that's not uh, very comfortable. During the Autonomy Day presentation in April, um, Andre Kaparthi mentioned that they had improved the cut-in detector, and let's hear him talk. As you may have noticed, we actually shipped one of our first versions of a cut-in detector um, approximately, I think, three months ago. So if you've noticed that the car is much better at detecting cut-ins, that's fleet learning operating at scale. Yes, it actually works quite nicely. So let's see how this works. This is version 2019.8. Uh, you'd think it would detect uh, turn signals, but clearly here Autopilot isn't detecting this uh, vehicle trying to get in. It's not slowing for it. It's not detecting the vehicle's turn signals. It's simply ignoring it. Now there's a car here that's going to come up on our left and try to cut in. And you'll see that Autopilot detects it earlier. Um, it shows up dark in the display here, and you can see its tires are not even across or uh, close to the lane line, and it's starting to slow down and adjust speed to let this vehicle in. So it's a subtle difference, but really actually pretty cool. Let's hear Kaparthi talk about how that's done. So the way this works is we ask the fleet to please send us data whenever they see a car transition from a right lane to the center lane or from left to center. And then what we do is we rewind time backwards, and we automatically can annotate that, hey, that car will, turn, will in 1.3 seconds, cut in in front, of the, in front of you. And then we can use that for training the neural net. And so the neural net will automatically pick up on a lot of these patterns. So for example, the cars are typically yawed. They're moving this way. Maybe the blinker is on. All that stuff happens internally inside the neural net just from these examples. So we ask the fleet to automatically send us all this data. We can get half a million or so images and uh, all of these would be annotated for cut-ins, and then we train the network. Go look at this in real life. This uh, BMW uh, is cutting in. And we can rewind things and take a closer look in semi-slow motion. Um, you can see here that uh, Autopilot is detecting that uh, BMW before it cuts in, and it's highlighted uh, dark gray in the screen. Um, let's get a look at what the car might be seeing. This is the view from the narrow field uh, front facing camera. You can see that the car is uh, yawed to the left. It's kind of in front of us and the left blinker is on. And so Autopilot is detecting uh, these cues to determine when uh, the car is about to cut in. And so as it's monitoring the frames from the video feed, when it sees an image that looks like a vehicle is about to cut in, it will detect that and slow accordingly. So here's kind of a neat situation where this car on the right uh, decides to try to cut in and Autopilot detects it and starts tracking its speed. Uh, but then when the car changes its mind, Autopilot stops tracking it. And so the way the neural net works is it's only evaluating individual frames in isolation. The, the, right now, AI and neural nets are used really for object recognition. Um, and we're still basically just using it as still frames, so identifying objects and still frames and tying it together in a perception path planning layer thereafter. So the early cut-in detector only seems to work at low speeds, maybe less than 30 miles per hour. At higher speeds, though, you really want to detect vehicles even earlier. Uh, like this situation because if you detect them right as they're about to cross the line, that's just too late. But some improvements might be on the way. Here's another clip from Autonomy Day. 
but we can also build very accurate predictions of how things will continue to happen in front of us. So one example I think is really exciting is we can actually look at bicyclists and people and not just ask, where are you now, but where are you going? And this is actually the heart of what we're doing for our, our next generation automatic emergency braking system, which will not just stop for people in your path, but it'll stop for people who are going to be in your path. And that's running in shadow mode right now. We'll go out to the fleet this quarter. So if we evaluate this image, uh, maybe this car is about to cut in, maybe it's not. It's kind of hard to tell. In this image, uh, it's pretty obvious, but we'd really like to detect this earlier. And one of the ways we can do this is to evaluate multiple images together rather than judging each image individually. And when you have a sequence of images like this, you can start to get to see that there's a trajectory. And so one way that Tesla might be able to do this is to use recurrent neural networks, which instead of being trained on individual images can be trained on a sequence of data in time. And Tesla is not the only one that might be doing this. Uh, NVIDIA and other research groups have been using recurrent networks. So this would be one way to do it. And here's a clip from NVIDIA. In this clip, the white boxes represent current object positions, while the yellow boxes are the recurrent neural network's predictions on where these objects will be about half a second in the future. And to simplify visualization, predictions are refreshed every half second. We can see that as time passes, the white boxes move towards the yellow ones in 2D image space, which shows that the network is correctly predicting future object motion. And this information would help the car to anticipate and adjust its trajectory as needed. So a lot of folks are working on this, but the uh, Teslas are the only cars that you can get these kind of improvements uh, over the air to existing vehicles, which is really cool. Uh, soon to come is uh, Autopilot version 10, and my prediction is we'll see some of these uh, new features that I just talked about. Well, that about does it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this relatively deep dive into how Autopilot works uh, detecting cut-ins. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to see videos coming uh, out next. And if you're researching to uh, purchase a Tesla and found these videos helpful, you can click on the link and find out how you can get uh, free supercharging. Uh, as always, a lot enjoyed having you along for a drive. And I hope you have a good day and see you in the next video.